Jamaica, a paradise of rolling hills that slope to the sea under a golden sun. To the outsider, each daybreak brings tropical breezes in from the Caribbean and a halo of sunshine that makes one forget the outside world. Hello, I'm Stan Coleman. When we think of Jamaica, we think of an island paradise with long sandy beaches, blue seas, palm trees, and warm weather. But there's a much bigger story here, one of wealth and poverty, one of health and illness, one of education. And for the next half hour, we will look at all of those elements through the eyes of some humanitarians who have come here from Western New York. Kingston, this is the real Jamaica, where contradictions stand side by side. Lavish homes next to shanty towns, people scurrying about looking as if they are on urgent business, and yet there is an astronomical unemployment rate estimated between 15 to 70 percent. A populace that is dependent on the textile industry but live in a world focused on and operated by high technology. It has a third world medical system that, when measured by U.S. standards, is equivalent to the 1960s and is in dire need of 21st century or at least 20th century equipment. These are all problems known all too well at the Governor General's house. Problems that the Governor General realizes it will take U.S. help to solve. The unemployment, it varies from place to place. In the rural area, people try to be self-sufficient. They try to produce what they eat. In the urban area, it is difficult, to be difficult because they haven't got the lands to produce what they would like to and um, so uh, there is a, some kind of poverty. So you have pockets of poverty. And um, there's always a contrast because there are some people who live in affluence and plenty. And then you have the extreme. And um, you will find in your practice and what you're going through, there are many persons who couldn't afford the care, the health care of that you are going to give to them. The unemployment, I can't give you the exact figures, no, but uh, it's too high. It's over 20 percent. And while the government apparently knows what the problems are, in some cases it is hampered by forces beyond its control. One such force is the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA Treaty. Well. Um, Taking them, taking them one at a time. NAFTA was an agreement, obviously, that, that dealt with specifically Mexico and Canada, but primarily Mexico as far as it relates to the Caribbean. Um, and it provided that uh, all goods, especially textiles, could come into the United States that were produced in Mexico, and they would, they would come in totally duty-free. Uh, a number of the countries in the Caribbean over the past 15 years have developed um, textile industries here where, where they will take uh, cloth that's cut in the United States, sew it together here, make underwear and, and t-shirts and that sort of thing. Uh, but, but they carry with, when, they, when they're sent, sent back into the United States, currently they carry with them s certain duties. And the, the small fraction of amount, the, the one or two cents per garment that makes the difference between the tariff they have to pay and what Mexico doesn't have to pay, puts them at a competitive disadvantage. And they've lost literally thousands of jobs here in Jamaica, as well as other c countries in the Caribbean. It's, uh, it's a situation that, that the president is, and uh, the administration and the Republicans, I might add, uh, have, have uh, talked about solving with a, 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 a bill that's currently before Congress called the uh, Caribbean Initiative Enhancements. And uh, hopefully if that goes through, that will, that will go a long way toward ameliorating that problem. But NAFTA is an outside force. Jamaica has internal problems that it needs to solve in order to right its economy and become a world player. Paul Barnett is a stockbroker and consultant living in Toronto, Canada. He was born and raised here. He does business in Jamaica and consults with clients on its economy. He sees his homeland with the eyes of a native who left and now looks back. I'm looking from it from outside in. Most of the investors that I do have, and I do have, as I have as clients, basically are sort of waiting to see 
how much more the country is going to come out of this whole financial crisis. If they, if they get themselves a little bit more straightened out, as the banks are doing right now, investors are willing to put money back into Jamaica. There are a lot of Jamaicans that are, are doing well overseas. A lot of investors are looking to put their money elsewhere. But do they trust the system right now? I don't think so. So I think they're waiting to see what's going to happen before they plow that money in, into the, into the economy and into the banks and the investment. But it is, it is, it is a, a, a good place for investment. It's just right now, there's a standoff. Reverend Edgerton R. Clark is the Archbishop of Kingston. In his opinion, Jamaica's salvation goes beyond training and promises of good paying jobs. The political system in Jamaica is divisive. It's not, it, it doesn't help people to develop a sense of nationhood and that we are working together to build ourselves as a people. It is always one upmanship, opposition against government, government against another group, and so on. It, it tears the people apart. When they are called upon to live on a certain moral plane and they haven't got the amenities, the very basics whereby to rise above their condition, they become frustrated, they're angry. It causes violence. Um, we have to begin with, if, if we really want to help people to become truly spiritual and have an ambition to live a worthwhile life, then we have to get to the basics. What is it that is going to provide these people with dignity? A home, a place for security. We talk about a father and a mother. There must be employment or opportunities for employment. There must be a justice system where certain people living in certain areas, referred to as inner city or ghetto areas, and they are being meted out a type of justice that is quite different from the type of justice that somebody living in another social and economic milieu would receive, then they become violent, they become aggressive. And this is part of the whole social disorder that we experience again and again. The Hope for Tomorrow Foundation has helped needy children in Russia, China, and Cuba. You too can help by sending a tax-deductible donation to Hope for Tomorrow Foundation, 811 Maple Road, Williamsville, New York, 14221. There is very little that most of us know about the politics of Jamaica, and what little bit we do know, we have no direct effect on. But there is something that we can do. We can volunteer. We can volunteer our time. We can volunteer our skills, such as the Hope for Tomorrow Foundation. The Hope for Tomorrow Foundation was created in 1994. Its aim is to bring surgical assistance to needy patients through reconstructive surgery. It is supported by a dedicated group of humanitarians from Western New York, led by Dr. Jeffrey Mileman, board certified surgeon from Amherst, New York. Over the years, the Hope for Tomorrow Foundation has been responsible for dozens of donated surgeries and hundreds of pounds of donated medical supplies. But more importantly, it has been responsible for convincing doctors from across the country to come with those supplies to donate their time and talent to helping people throughout the world regain their lives. Doctors from many different disciplines, optometrists, urologists, anesthesiologists, surgeons, gynecologists, dentists, plastic surgeons, and the list goes on. The Hope for Tomorrow Foundation came to Jamaica bearing gifts, $10,000 in medical equipment. The medical team consisted of Amherst plastic surgeon, Dr. Jeffrey Mileman, and dentist Franklin Corrin, also from Amherst. Several Hope for Tomorrow board members made the trip to Jamaica to get a first-hand view of the needs here. A tour of a ward in the Bustamante Hospital for Children lets them know their services are sorely needed. These innocent children will require massive surgeries to correct their medical problems. Surgeries by skilled doctors with very limited and sometimes outdated supplies. The Bustamante Children's Hospital is our major pediatric hospital in the Caribbean and it is the biggest uh, children's unit in Jamaica. There are, it is a multidisciplinary hospital, 
So there are specialist services as well as, as, well as general pediatric medicine. As a result of that, uh, complicated cases, or most of the complicated cases, whether they be from congenital deformities or traumatic deformities or from malignancies or cancers, would present to us at the Bustamante Hospital. Now, a good number of these we, we are able to help. But there are always difficult cases that we benefit significantly from help uh, with specialists overseas. Either when they come to visit us to help us directly with these children, or if the facility is not capable of coping with a complex case, they, help, they may help us to, um, to facilitate that child having the service overseas. Uh, and there are a number of these cases that we see in our clinics. Quite often, we realize that it's a difficult problem and we tell the parents that <coughs> hopefully we will make some contact with an agency, a surgeon, a unit, or whatever in a bigger center like the United States. And that will help us to get some help for the kid. Sometimes it doesn't work because we don't have the contact that we would like. So it, it is very helpful if organizations such as the Hope, Hope Foundation can provide us with that link for these more complex cases that may need to go overseas. Doctors Myelman and Corin met with surgeons at Bustamante Children's Hospital where they offered their services to help children with catastrophic injuries and afflictions. This boy lost an eye to cancer. Dr. Myelman will try to bring him to the United States to give him a prosthetic eye and remove this terrible scar. The problems here are not of medical competence, but of need. Need for equipment that is in short supply or unavailable. Where we are concerned in the major hospitals, uh, there are areas such as trauma. Trauma consumes a lot of our resources. And in the children, in particular, burn trauma, uh, but road traffic accidents also. And in this area, um, we certainly would appreciate aid in terms of burn, materi burn dressing material, uh, equipment for doing reconstructive surgery, help with some of the difficult reconstructive cases, either with surgeons coming down to work with us or uh, some of the difficult cases going up to them. Uh, and um, some of the types of equipment that we use, such as skin grafting materials, skin grafting uh, knives and blades that are easily used up when we have a lot of cases. This boy was horribly burned by chemicals. He is undergoing a skin graft. The knife the doctors are using has an old dull blade because new ones are hard for them to come by. In the U.S. that is unheard of. It demonstrates the severity of need in the hospitals of Jamaica. I think uh, our foundation, Hope for Tomorrow Foundation, can really honestly help this particular entity with uh, equipment uh, that's very reasonable in, uh, in cost. Uh, they're not asking for that kind of heavy equipment. Uh, they're asking for day-to-day -day kind of equipment. And we will help them in terms of bringing several children back with us to Western New York for uh, surgery that uh, we, uh, we can perform simply because we have better uh, equipment. Our needs, true enough, are not as great as some other countries, but there are deficiencies and a lack of equipment that we would really have to address. 
uh, in the hospitals, uh, the situation is not as good as we would wish in the provision of, uh, of equipment. Take for instance dialysis, we haven't got enough shares and we haven't got enough money to man them even when we get into some. And um, we have tried to set up clinics in the rural areas and uh, I noticed recently we have had to close some of them because as you know now um, medicine is very expensive uh, which has caused us more or less to be turning to alternative medicine. That's a nice word for it. But we know in Jamaican setting we call it bush medicine using the old time remedies which we had discarded and uh, the, the need for the, that new type of medicine is here and uh, I am not in the controversy as to whether it should be the one or the other but I think we need both and another thing around the areas uh, we need facilities like ambulances to take people quickly to the hospital in need I think we are very woefully short in that we are woefully short in good new types of beds to treat the sick. And um, we find that the, such of the medical treatment that we get is so expensive that most of the poor people can't afford it. So when your team comes down here, it's a godsend. And so often they go into areas and treat the eyes, the ears, and all sorts of diseases. And there are some organizations you know, that are sending children with heart problems uh, to United States. So United States provides a source of help for which we appreciate very much. That assessment is borne out as Dr. Korn toured the dental surgical wing at Bustamante Children's Hospital in Kingston. They have two chairs, but only one is operational. The other is used for spare parts. We could use a chair because um, this one, we're going to basically using it to create parts for that one. Oh, so you could use so another chair. So we could use another chair. The doctors here are very good. They make do with what they have. This boy will recover from his wounds. His outlook is really is good. He'll be deformed in terms of uh, cosmetic uh, appearance, but uh, he'll be fully functional. And these uh, physicians uh, have his best uh, interest at heart, and they will see to it that this boy comes out totally rehabilitated in terms of function. So they're able to do that. Again, they're asking us and our foundation for some equipment so that they can do that kind of thing for uh, many other children who are burned. Their economy is greatly contracted and they're having a lot of uh, difficulties so health care uh, suffers as being one of the let's say non-essentials in, in the third world kind of thinking. Um, so it's, it's really a problem for those patients who are stuck in that uh, kind of thinking and for the physicians who are trying to deal with that. The Hope for Tomorrow Foundation has helped needy children in Poland, India, and Jamaica. Please send tax-deductible contributions to Hope for Tomorrow Foundation, 811 Maple Road, Williamsville, New York, 14221. The struggling health care system is just one symptom of Jamaica's problems. Perhaps its biggest problem is not challenging its greatest asset, the people. I think there, there's one area that, that I think uh, there is a great future for specifically Jamaica. Jamaica is the third largest English-speaking country in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, that is, gives them an enormous advantage in certain things. Uh, currently, there is very little in the way of, of uh, high-tech type industries here, telecommunications, that sort of thing, uh, IT type jobs. And there is absolutely no reason why uh, when, when in America we are are crying out for so many people in data, data entry, in computer programming, and in, in things as simple as call centers. 
those, those operations could be located here. Uh, there, there's a relatively well-educated uh, strata of the population that could, could provide those jobs. Currently there are maybe three or 4,000 of those jobs. There's no reason why uh, with the help of, of uh, industry and, and uh, investment in America that we can't have 40,000 jobs in this country and that would do an enormous amount to turn the economy around. I think that there are certain initiatives that could, could be done. I think there's some partnership that has to be done. I think there's some changes that has to be done for, for Jamaica to accept that help, to help them take them out of where they're at right now. But I think that the help is there. I think the resources are there. We just now have to find out how do we, instead of going the traditional way, how do we partner with these different organizations, with these things, to help us come out of this. One of the things that makes Jamaica so unique is that it is a completely English-speaking country, in that there are certain advantages for the Jamaicans as well as for us. It facilitates alliances, alliances like the Jamaica-Western New York Partners. This is Jonestown, Jamaica, a ghetto in Kingston. But in the middle of it is an example of people working together. The people in Buffalo, New York, I teach students, and our students, and the people from the Partners of the Americas in Buffalo, New York, have sent you to your school a lot of supplies. So what you're going to be able to do, can I show some of what you're going to be able to do, we'll leave this with the school. We have some finger painting paper, so we have paper for you to paint on. His Majesty's Basic School is a private school created when one man saw a need, took the initiative, and asked for help. His Majesty's Basic School started as the result of a youth club that saw the need for education for younger children. A Rasta man by the name of Steady Smith, he used to bring children to his home and they would be taught at his house. Realizing that there was a greater need for this, he approached the business community, specifically Courts Jamaica Limited, and asked for assistance. Knowing that Jamaica Western New York Partners has an education program, Courts approached partners for assistance, and that is how His Majesty's Basic School came to be. Courts Jamaica Limited bought the land and built the school. It's owned and operated by, his, by Jamaica Western New York Partners. The Jamaica Partners are partnered with the Western New York Partners to form the Western New York Jamaica Partners. Each is a member of an international organization of hands across the sea. Partners of the Americas is an inter-American organization which seeks to link people of like professional interest um, in both the, the United States and areas south of the United States border, that being the Caribbean and Latin America. Um, we're very involved with training and raising the quality of life by direct people-to-people -people relationships. So we work through a, what we call a longitudinal relationship where people in a specific geographic area are linked with others of, of like interest such as is happening in Jamaica at this moment, where there is a, a medical team from Western New York visiting Jamaica to perform professional surgery and to associate with like professionals to share and transfer technology. Um, we do similar things in the field of education, in, in, in sports, in, in culture, we have had a very dynamic um, relationship in the, in the area of sports between Western New York and, and Jamaica, which is one of 60 chapters in this hemispheric network. The cross-ocean exchange is one of equals. Here at the Edna Manley College, the Western New York partners have sent dancers from the Buffalo School for the Performing Arts, and these dancers have come to Western New York. There is much to share between the two nations, including cultural differences and basic needs. We know that the way out of poverty is through education, so we are trying to assist the partners in Jamaica to help them maintain the school. The children here are very well behaved. They, they performed for us. They had songs for us. They are very mannerly, very polite. They're darling children, and we know that to get this sort of effect, you need resources, you need support. And we try and contribute this sort of thing to the 
the town here in Jonestown. The individual Jamaican is industrious. For what he lacks in medical support, for what he lacks in governmental assistance, and for what he lacks in up-to-date education, he makes up for in surviving day-to-day -day in an underground economy. The underground economy has been um, almost, it's probably stronger than the above ground economy because a lot of trade-off goes on. You know, one person will say, I'll fix your car if you do this service for me. So you really don't see the true picture of the economy because there's so much underground going on there. When we look at, when we look at uh, factories closing or industry closing, we look at uh, jobs being lost. And usually uh, the young people usually suffer in, in, in those, those cases. Most of the factories that have been here and closing down, or most of the companies are closing down, they're saying it is better, it is cheaper to go overseas, go to the other Caribbean islands and do the production than do it in Jamaica. So that is the story of Jamaica. And while in some places it may be an island paradise, the simple fact is it is a real place with real people who have real problems, and they need our help. You can help by sending your tax-deductible donation to the Hope for Tomorrow Foundation, 811 Maple Road, Williamsville, New York, 14221. For the Hope for Tomorrow Foundation, I'm Stan Coleman. Thank you for watching.